As we start to look into graphing and how that behavior works with different types of functions, we need to learn a little bit of terminology. So let's start off and talk about what is a function and is not a function so you can recognize it. The majority of our work is going to be regarding functions. So let's talk about how we can tell one from the other. And then when we get further into functions and we start talking about inverses, I can be a little bit more forthcoming about why we care. <laughs> okay, so right now let's just try to figure out how to recognize them. All right, now a relation is, a, is any set of ordered pairs. And typically for what we've been doing, it's the first entry into this ordered pair where you have these parentheses would be an x value and the second entry would be a y value. But it could be something like um, s and t or it could be r and theta, but we're not going to be doing that um, in this course, at least the r and theta. We could possibly later on come up with S and T, that would just be a position function in terms of time. But typically, it's X and then Y. And you would plot these points over here on a graph where you would have an X axis and a Y axis. So that if you had the point 2, 4, you would go 2 over and 4 up. And that would be a point right there. So the first number says how far to go in the x direction. Second number says how far to go in the y direction. So we could have just a random set of ordered pairs like 2, 4. You could have 1, 3, negative 5, 6, um, 2, and negative 3. Oh, I don't know, 0 and 7. 1 and negative 2. Now that's just a random assortment of ordered pairs. And they're a relation. There's some sort of a relationship between the x and the y. We don't know what it is, okay, but there is some hinted at or covered up or not, not directly said to you what the relationship is. It is not a function. Because a function is a relation. So if relations are any set of ordered pairs, a function is a subset of those ordered pairs in which each x has only one value of y associated to it. So do you see how right here, here's an x of 2, which has a value of 4. But over here is an x of 2, which has a value of negative 3. Okay, so if we plotted those, we would have this 2, 4, and this 2, negative 3. And do you see how they're above each other? So this x has two y's, this y and this y. And that makes it not a function. Okay, So a function is a relationship in which each x has only one y. Can you see any other ordered pairs up there in the relationship that are would make this excluded from functions? Well, here's a 1, 3, and a 1, negative 2. So we would have a 1, 3, and a 1, negative 2. And see how this x has two y's. So that makes it not a function. So for it to be a function, you would just have 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 6. Now, you could have 6 and 4. You could have negative 2 and 3. So duplicated y's are OK, but they have to be associated with different x's. So that if you looked at these, You have 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 6 and 4. 6 would be way out here, and 4. And negative 2 and 3. Now, but do you see how each one of these, wherever your x is, there is only one y value above it or below it. 
right? So that makes it a function. So when you see them where you have an X and a Y and maybe a second or third Y that's, just, that's above that same X or below that X, that's not a function. So they came up with what's called the vertical line test if you have a graph, All right? And it says if you have a drawing and if you can take a vertical line line and pass it over this graph and have just one intersection point. So if you look and look at the edge of this ruler, that would be vertical. And as you pass it, you only see one point being intersected by the ruler. I can keep it vertical. Trying to keep it vertical. There it goes. As you pass it along. So each X goes up or down to one Y. So like this X only has this Y down here and so forth. Now let's look over here. As you pass this across, do you see how each X, like look at this X is five. There's a Y above it and there's a Y below it. So that fails the vertical line test. This is not a function. It only takes one of these to fail, but there's an infinite number of X's where there's a Y above and a Y below. This is not a function. So if it passes through there, and each point on this line, each X only has one Y, but if you look at this one, this one has just an X of three, and all the y's are above it. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And let's look at these and see if we can talk about not just whether it's a function or not. Let's talk about domains and ranges as well. So this graph is a function. Because when we pass a vertical line from left to right, or you could go right to left, it intersects each point on the graph just one time. All right, so it is a function. Now, the domain Let's talk about the domain. The domain is a word that's used when they're trying to use one word to ask you kind of a long question. So the domain says, what values of x are found within this function or allowed to be chosen to compute, okay, and, and y value that's associated with it. So what x's are utilized in this function? And a fast way to say that is, what's the domain? Okay, so the domain is asking you about the x values. And the range is a one word summary of, can you describe to me what y values are associated with this function? And it doesn't have to be a function, it could be not a function. But in this relationship or in this function, what are the values of y that you're going to see, All right? And there's several ways to answer this. Sometimes they use inequalities, but we're going to use interval form because that's the way that's usually carried forward from college algebra into trig and then into calculus. So let's practice interval form. If you um, have forgotten how that goes, there's some supplementary videos on in this, <coughs> excuse me, in this website where it talks about graphing inequalities and it would cover interval four. All right, so the range is talking about y. Now, I'm one, a big believer in trying to find little ways to try to hang on to which one's which, especially when you're learning a lot of new, new terminology at the same time. So when I first learned this way back yonder, okay, the um, I learned it sort of as an alphabetical thing. X comes before Y in the alphabet, and D comes before R in the alphabet, so domain goes with X, and range goes with Y. So this is a function. It passes a vertical line test. The domain says, let's talk about the X values. 
Now, this is a parabola, and even though it's very slowly getting wider and wider, it's going to eventually extend all the way out here as we go farther and farther out. Okay, it's going to eventually cover all of the x values because it's just going to keep getting wider and wider and wider like this. Okay, I'm kind of exaggerating just so you can see it. Now, so it would go from negative infinity to positive infinity. All the way to the left and all the way to the right. Now, the range, right, the lowest value is this negative 5. So it goes from negative 5 up. So how do we say that in an interval? It's negative 5 and then up. So let's talk for just a second so we can get this kind of worked out and then the rest of the problem should go a little faster. When you do the domain, okay, the interval goes from left to right. Not right to left or anything else like that. And the range goes, some people say bottom to top or low to high. Okay, however you want to say it. So bottom to top, low, lowest value to highest value, whatever you want to say. Now, whether it's rounded, whether you have rounded like this or whether you have squared off like this, depends on whether you actually get to that value and or you just get closer and closer and closer to that value. All right. So when you're talking about infinities, if you pick a huge number like a million, I can get bigger. How about two million? And if I pick two million, you could get 16 million. I could get 25 billion. So you just keep getting closer and closer and closer to the positive and negative infinity direction, but you never actually get there and get to stop. So the infinities are always rounded because you never really get to get there and be done. Okay. Now this actually did get to negative five and we stopped going down. So this one is squared off. Sometimes when I'm, I'm teaching this to students for the first time and they're having trouble keeping this straight, I, I do like this. And I go, look, if you had a little person, okay, they would slide off because they don't have a firm footing to stand on versus if you have a little person right here, they can actually stand right there. So if you get to that point and you can stand right here, there's your little person, okay, then it's squared off because it's got a little ledge for them to stand on. If you keep going and 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 going this way and you never get to stop, you know, the sliding off sort of helps them to remember. And it may just annoy you. I don't know. But anyway, that's the way I do it. So you're doing all right? Okay, let's do another one. This one we've already discussed fails the vertical line test. So this one is not a function. But we can talk about the domain. Now the domain says, what kind of x values are you going to get from this? And so if you look at it, this is my leftmost x, and then it goes forever to this way. So I'm going to start back here at what looks like negative 2 and go all the way to infinity. So the domain goes left to right, so we start at negative 2, and we're going out to infinity. Infinities are always round. And we did reach the negative 2. And the range, well, it keeps going wider and wider and taller and taller. So my lowest point is going to be negative infinity to infinity. Doing okay? Hope so. Let's do another one. This is a vertical line. This is not a function. It is a vertical line. But if you look at the points, you know, it's got 3, 0, 3, 2. Oh, sorry, 3, 2 is up here. This would be 3, 2, 1. Sometimes when these change, okay, even though I wrote that down. Okay, 3, 3. So see how each x does not have one y? 
So this is not a function, all right? So then um, it can still have a domain. What kind of x values does it have? It only has one. The only x it has is three. So it's three and only three. What kind of range is it? It's going to go negative infinity to infinity because it's forever down to forever up. All right. Negative infinity to infinity. This one is a function. Because if you pass that vertical line test, it only hits one point on that graph at a time. What's its domain? How far left does it go? Negative infinity. How far right does it go? Positive infinity. How far up and down does it go? Um, yeah, it only goes through 4. That's all it's going to do. So its range is 4. And only 4. All right. This one. Do you think it's a function? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, it does. Okay, so this one is a function. Now, this end goes down. This end goes up. So it's going to go negative infinity to positive infinity down to up. Okay, so that's the range. Left to right, it's going to go I guess it needs to go your left to right. All right, then it would go negative infinity to infinity this way as well. So the domain is negative infinity to infinity, and the range is negative infinity to infinity. This one, if you pass a vertical line test, see how it fails the vertical line test because it hits more than one point. So this is not a function. And the domain talks about the possible x value. So the leftmost is negative 2. And the rightmost is 2. My squared off brackets look kind of bent. There you go. And it's bottommost is negative 2. And the topmost is 2. All right. What about this one? This one is a function. What's its domain? Going left to right. Well, it keeps expanding from negative infinity to positive infinity, left to right. And the range. Okay, this one, this one, I probably shouldn't have drilled that down there. Let's put this up here. It goes left to right, negative infinity to infinity. You agree? Now, I drew it down here, but I was talking about left to right, not, not how far down it's extending. Now, how far down does it extend? It keeps going down to negative infinity. How far up does it go? It only goes up to 5. Now, remember that for the range, it's the lowest value to the highest value. So the lowest is negative infinity, and it goes lowest to highest, and then it goes to 5. It is not 5 to negative infinity. This is top to bottom. And we don't go top to bottom. We go bottom to top. So it's negative infinity up to 5. All right. Let's learn another one. Alrighty. So let's go over to here and let's talk about increasing and decreasing. Right. Increasing, um, you could think about this as where it's going, you have to read left to right, going uphill. Or it's climbing. Some people say that it's climbing. Decreasing is where it seems to be going downhill. 
or where it's falling. But we always read these left to right. All right. Now, so increasing is where it's, it's going uphill, decreasing where it's going downhill, and constant. would be where it looks like it's flat or horizontal. All right, so look at this one. And when you do these intervals, you always use X values. So when you learn how to do increasing and decreasing, you know, you can look at a picture and, and point at it and say this is where it's going up and this is where it's going down. But when you give the answer, you have to give the answers using X values. And because your eye is going up and down, up and down, your eye wants desperately to give a Y value, okay, because you're you're tracing up and down, which is a Y direction. But you have to resist that and say, okay, I may be looking up and down, but I have to answer in terms of X, okay? So let's look for where this is increasing. So can you see how it is increasing going uphill from there to there? So here it is increasing. And over here on this side, as we read left to right, it is decreasing. As opposed to over here where it is a constant value, it's just flat, all right? So how do we say this? Let's kind of start off. So if I said, where is it increasing? It is increasing from here to here. Now, I don't want to know how far up it's going. That was to deal with the range. I want to know from what to what using X values. Okay, so X is zero and this section over here is increasing. So you would say zero to infinity. All right, where is it decreasing? Well, it's decreasing on that left section. So it is decreasing over here. But we go left to right and we talk about the X values. So it's going to be negative infinity to zero. And where is it constant? It is not anywhere in there constant. So sometimes you can write N slash A, which stands for not applicable. Some teachers have you write none. Um, don't, don't do things um, and say, I had a student one time write on the test and they went, I don't think so, which translates to, I don't think so. All right, so don't use some sort of phrase that, that's, you know, an alternative to none or not applicable. Just just answer the question. <laughs> All right. Now, what are the key facts here? You have to write X values only. You have to write left to right. And you'll notice here that these are curved, these zeros. Even though we went through this point and we actually reached zero, because remember over here, we were using little squared off ones for getting to negative two. And the best explanation I can give you is kind of goes like this. Let me try if I can draw this. So we are decreasing, 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 decreasing. It's like going downhill. Okay, going downhill, down, 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 down. Down here at the bottom, we are not going down anymore and we're not going up yet. So we're sort of like maybe taking a breather. You think of this as hiking. So you're going down, 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 down. Let's sit here and take a rest for a second. And then we're going to start increasing, going up, up, up. So at that point where we change, we're neither decreasing nor increasing. 
so they're rounded. All right, here we go. This one, by the way, we decided is a function, all right? This one is, where is it increasing? It is not, it's flat. Where is it decreasing? It is not. And where is it constant? Everywhere from left to right. Sometimes when students see these questions where you have parts like this and, and it's not doing that, they just leave it blank. Well, blank is wrong. Blank says, I don't know. Blank says, I don't, I don't know what to say, so I'm not gonna say anything. All right, so the proper answer is it isn't doing this. Okay, so none, N-A, whatever you, your teacher wants you to say, but you have to say something, right? Let's look here. This one is increasing from here to here. And again, from here to here. And sometimes you can have multiple sections. So it is a function, correct? And where is it increasing? Well, it's increasing in this section right here. So we're going to read left to right. So this first section starts off at negative infinity up to this point. But we don't write y values. We write x values. And the x value here is negative 2. And we have another section. So we put that little u that stands for union, which means both, right? Now over here, we start at this point, and we're going to go forever right. So this appears to be 6, right? So this would be 6 to infinity. Where is it decreasing? It's decreasing in this middle section. Right in here is where it's decreasing. So it would be decreasing from negative 2 to 6. Now if you look at this, can you see how all the sections of the graph are um, described here? So you're going to go negative infinity to negative 2, negative 2 to 6, 6 to infinity. So it covers all of the function. And is there any section in here where it's constant? No. All right. Let's look at this one. Is it a function? Sure. Okay. Is it increasing anywhere? Yes, it's increasing here. And it's increasing here. So it's increasing. Remember, we're going to go left to right. So we start at negative infinity. Up until here, it's increasing. So that looks like negative 1 for the x value. So we're going to say negative 1. And then this part right here, which is 3, to positive infinity. And where is it decreasing? It is not decreasing anywhere along its length. And where is it constant? It is constant from here to here. So it would be constant between negative 1 and up to 3. So if you see, again, negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to 3, 3 to infinity covers all of that section. Let's do these last two. And while I'm writing this out, see if you can identify where these are. All right. So where is it increasing? From here to here, it's going up. From here to here, it's going up as well. All right. 
So where is it increasing? Let's look at this first section right in here. So this would be negative one, negative two. So negative two over to this point, what are we gonna write? One. So it's increasing negative two to one union. And then it starts here, which is one, two, three, two to infinity, three to infinity. Now to see how it's so tempting sometimes to write y values, but you can't. All right, where is it decreasing? Everywhere else. All right, so it's decreasing from negative infinity all the way down to here. And then it stops decreasing. And that would change at negative two. So this is negative two. And then it picks up decreasing right here and goes decreasing to there. So that would be one to three. All right, and is there any place where it's constant? No. Okay, where is this one increasing? Remember we're going left to right, so that would be negative infinity. Up to here is where it stops increasing. So this point is zero, five. So what do we use? Zero or five? Well, the x value is zero. All right, where is it decreasing? From zero to infinity. And where is it constant? It is not anywhere constant. All right. By the way, what is this one's domain? Negative infinity to infinity. And what's its range? Negative infinity to five. Yep. All right. Just out of curiosity, what if there were not any arrows down there and it stopped mm, right here? So what if these pieces were not there? All right. What would be its range? If it stopped right there, its range would be Let's see, this is negative two to five. So the range would be negative two to five for that altered version. All right. And then there's some exercises for you to practice with in the descriptions down below this video. And we will start transformations in the next video where we're going to be shifting up and down and left and right and stretching and compressing and flipping about the x-axis and the y-axis. Lots of fun. All right. So see you at the next video.